Welcome to the show. I'm Jessica Shaw. I'm Torre. And this is Binge Worthy. We tell you what to binge. And what to delete. Today we're talking about the return of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Season two of This Is Us. And season one of The Mayor. Cheers to shows that are pretty, pretty good. Oh, you did that one good. And thanks to our yeah. host, Vinyl in New York City. All right, Jess, let's talk TV. The massively successful family drama This Is Us has returned for a second season on NBC. The season premiere gave us a few more clues about how Jack dies, but this week mercifully leaves that mystery behind for some major mother-daughter drama. Wow. New episodes air Tuesdays at 9. I know you guys didn't have a perfect marriage. You just lost a child, and you both just wanted me. Right away, just like that. It's complicated. It's something people say when they don't want to tell the truth. I know this is kind of blasphemy to say, I didn't like the season premiere. What? I just thought like, it was just too much of it. It was like, what are you lost at this point? They're like <laughs> dropping clues. Someone's in a cast. There's a hatch. There's a dog. It just, I was like, I don't care. I know he's dead. That's enough for me. I don't need the entire show to be about parsing clues about his death. To me, episode two is what the show is, what makes the show great. It's you get to see these characters that I've come to love over the last season. And I want to see Kate, and I want to see the battle that she has with her mother and, and her oh. boyfriend. I just thought it was so good. Like, this was the week I cried. Last week, I was dead inside. <laughs> the depth of emotion and the seriousness of emotion within this piece is just always so extraordinary. I mean, so many shows don't seem like real life, and this one gets much closer to real life and the real complexity of emotion that we all go through and how a moment can easily turn from laughter to melancholy to sadness and back or whatever. And just the little things that Mandy Moore says to her, like, oh yeah, I used to sing. Just the little, oh. just undercutty things that moms do and they don't mean anything, I but know. they're cutting into your soul and they may not realize it or maybe they do, but it's, it's. I realize every single <laughs> one. <laughs> that you do or gets done to you? That I do, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like a quarter in the therapy bin. <laughs> for, that, yes. for them, yes. for their therapy. Absolutely. For your poor girls. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm singing in the shower and sounding better than you. No. <laughs> oh, it's so, it's so hard to watch that mother-daughter relationship. It's so it is. fraught, it you know, is. and then you watch it. And that's what they do well. And it just seems like in some ways the show got taken over by people being obsessed with this this other thing, and they need to, and the, and, and the creators of the show and the producers and the writers, they were like, oh yeah, people seem really fascinated into, you know, Jack's death and how it happened, so let's let's just double down on that, and it's like, I, no, redirect, because that's not what makes the show great. I, I mean, I don't even really follow so much of the plot that much, because just the tsunami of emotion and the flow back and forth is like pushing back and forth and now we're laughing and now we're right. engaged and now we're sad and this is melancholy and awkward and difficult and it's just this this it, it, it's so much the feels is too much for me it's a lot it's of an feels. amazing show but yeah. it's a lot it's a lot like there's a lot of feels and it definitely does feel like at times they're like uh have we hit our tear quotient for this week <laughs> check you know or and it, make them cry again make them cry again and it does feel that and i thought that episode two was more successful and made me feel better about yeah. this season because it's hard to i mean when season one is as incredibly successful as this first season was it's kind of, it's hard to follow it. There's more pressure on the show. There's more pressure, but I mean, like, they have a machine. They know what they're doing. It's well acted. It's well written. It is well considered. Just the structure of what they're all setting out to try to do is extraordinary. This is one of the great shows on television, and it will make you feel everything. Ruin so the Kleenex much. box and yes. laugh. And, um, Just don't wear mascara ever. <laughs> ever. I don't. But I would binge this because it's one of the great shows on TV. Yeah, I mean, I'm totally binging this show. Even last week, even during the season premiere, when I was like, I hate this episode, this makes me feel nothing, and I'm angry that they're trying to like make this a mystery and whatever, I was like, I hated that hour of TV. Can't wait to watch it. Again. Can't wait to I watch mean, it. I mean, binging all the way. Coming up next, we'll talk about season nine of Curb Your Enthusiasm.
Welcome back, I'm Torre. I'm Jessica Shaw. And this is Bingeworthy. We tell you what to binge. And what to not delete. Like Curb Your Enthusiasm, one of the great sitcoms of television is back. The ninth season of Larry David's game-changing improvised comedy airs Sundays at 10 on HBO. Enigma. <laughs> Enjoy the mind of Larry David. Anytime you want to get rid of me as a patient, just say, uh, I've had enough. Oh, dear God. I'd like you to leave, Larry. Out. I want you to go out of my house. Thank you for leaving! If I see you on my bus again, I'm gonna f you up. Okay. I was watching this episode, and I thought, man, this is great, but it's the same thing we've seen before. And then the plot changes and grows, and I'm like, this is one of the great episodes of Curb. It's so smart, it's so meta, it's so thoughtful. When there's a fatwa declared against Larry for creating a play called Fatwa, it's so meta and so Larry and yet so real. Wouldn't that actually happen? Oh if someone God. like Larry existed in the real world and tried to create a play called the Fatwa, and then there's a fatwa there would be a fatwa him against fatwa. him for, oh my God. I, I feel it. like from the very first second that he's on camera, you know the show's been off for so many years and he's in the shower and the, there are those, you know, those um, push thingies and he can't get for it to soap. work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, push thingy is the actual term. <laughs> okay, you yeah, got it, got the it. marketing <laughs> term. Um, and he can't get it and he's just all rage filled about it and I was like, yes, yes. Larry, we have missed you. I'm, I'm like, this is his lane, right? Yeah. Of those little mundanities that annoy the hell out of you, like that is Larry David's lane and he's crushing it. That said, I, I was so happy to see him back, but there were certain plots that, I don't know, like I felt, you know how there's cringe TV? Yes, and, and you love, he's cringe TV. He is like the definition of cringe TV, yeah. whether Seinfeld, you know, what Chico created, or this show, and you want to sort of crawl out of your skin at times, like you feel like you have to leave the room and just not actually watch the screen. Yeah. I felt like I was bad cringing a little bit during the thing when he's like, you're not the bride, you're the groom. To, right, you know, a to this kind couple. of like butch lesbian. And I, and I don't like feeling that way. Like, I feel like the death of comedy is political correctness. But sometimes there is a little bit of a gut check, and you're like, ugh, like, are we really gonna have, like, an old white guy telling, like, a young lesbian how to be? Like, to me, that was like, uh, uh oh. And I don't wanna be hashtag woke because <laughs> I don't wanna so be woke. like a Levi's commercial on SNL. On the other hand, <laughs> it did make me cringe bad, whereas there was so much the cringe, cringe good, good yeah. like the Richard Lewis Look, moment. And Larry is an ass. And you never want to be acting like Larry or doing anything that Larry does. Right. And when, when people are racist or sexist or homophobic or what have you, or over normalizing, you know, and they're being ass, I'm like, I'm supportive of that, right? Because you're showing being like that is wrong and up. Right. So he, if you would say that, and Larry's saying that, then you are looking like an idiot. So I support Larry making people having dumb positions about other people look really dumb. And I thought it worked, and I thought that moment felt very authentic for who Larry is, that he would say that, and not realize how obnoxious it is to say that. And I just thought that the lesbians would have shut him down in a much meaner way, and he would have yeah. had to crawl out of there with his tail between his legs. Maybe that's what I needed. Maybe I needed them to kind of get him more instead of, in the end, I just, like, I felt like they broke up. Right. You know, in some ways, because he planted this seed, and it just, there was something about it. Like, I can't even explain it. I just know that that's not what I want. I don't want to walk, I want to walk away, like, bathing in awkwardness. I want, like, that's what I love about the show. See, I don't want to feel like, ugh, too This kind of drives towards something I've been thinking about this show for a while, that there's awkwardness and then there's assholeness, right? And right. awkwardness is funny, but being an asshole is not that funny. Right. And when Larry was married to Cheryl, who's like nice and cute She's and great, cool yeah. and fun and a normal person, and I totally respect her. I was like, well, there must be something. He can't be a total asshole right. because she's sticking by him. Yes. So she redeemed him, right? That Alec Baldwin speech in The Departed, right? You got a nice wife by your side. It makes people think that you're maybe you're a nice person. Yeah. Even if you don't seem like a nice person. The split from Cheryl has always seemed to me to be a critical creative mistake for the show. 
because it leaves him single and older, and thus it makes me think, oh, he actually is a jerk. He's not, right, he's not lovable. Right. Because in some ways, that character of Larry David, he is just like, he's a mess, and he's awkward, and he's, but, but he's kind of lovable. And Cheryl was this important yeah. weight. Even if she wasn't in the scene, even if you didn't see her in the episode, you know he's married to this yeah. really nice, pretty woman, so he can't be all bad. Right. And now that he's single, I'm like, maybe you are all bad. Right. Well, that's the danger, and it'll be interesting to see how the season plays out yeah. with that. I mean, I don't know. Like, do we need? Does does he as a, does Larry as a character need to be with Cheryl to redeem him to sort of allow him to make jokes about certain things? I, mean, I don't know. I'm super binging Curb Your Enthusiasm. This is one of the great shows of modern TV. Hell yeah! And even when I hate the show, I'm still binging it because I'm still like. Oh, I hate you so much, but I can't wait till next week. Can't wait till next week. What if a rapper ran for mayor and won? What if a reality show maniac ran for president and won? It would be a sickening mess. But I digress. I'm sorry. I had to get that out. In ABC's The Mayor, a smart young rapper who lives with his mom becomes the mayor of a small California town and has to grow up fast. It airs Tuesdays at 9.30 p.m. Uh, What's happening? It appears as if Courtney Rose is mayor of Fort Gray. What, what happened? You the mayor. Well, this has to be a mistake. What do I do? You want my two cents? Oh, you serve for one day only. That way you can get the scissors. The scissors. The, the giant scissors they give mans to cut ribbons. It's politics 101. Yeah, scissors you, yes, I am, because I'm the fire! Oh, where is it? It just means that we're going out to the fire escape to have a talk. I can see how it can be a little confusing. Miss Dina, you we, can't yell fire at black people like that. Say. I'm skidding. The premise could lead to something horrible or really good. I thought this show was really funny and smart and interesting and valuable, and he's not a clown. Even, you know, they, I, 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 the rapper who wants to become mayor only to help right. his rap career, I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna make him. No, he's not a clown. He says really smart things at times, but not over smart. His mom is this great person with a lot of character. Um, I, I like his crew when he stays I up love late. His two friends. Yeah. His two friends are so funny. He stays up late to like make a new park for people after he screwed up before. Right. I, I like this guy. I would follow him. I want to see where he's going to go. I agree. I think Brandon Michael Hall is so good. And he just, he's a, that right balance of really funny, but also he seems just kind of new. And, and you, you buy it that he's learning as he goes along. Yeah. To me, the real winner of the show is Yvette Nicole Brown. Yes. She is so as his good. Mom. She plays his mom, and she's just like, she she looks at the TV and she's the one who first realizes she's like what just happened like <laughs> is he actually the mayor and she kind of has to school him and and let him know now you need you to step up. up and and I think it's a trend now in comedies it's not enough to just make a funny comedy but there has to be a kind of heartfelt message at the end and I right. think that was something that Modern Family ushered in in many sure. ways and everything you know there's in the third act at some point there's gonna be a moment where maybe there's a little bit of a lesson or you you know you start to feel something other than laughing and sometimes it just feels so saccharine mm, and insincere yeah but on this show it didn't it yeah. felt very real yeah. and I really I liked it a lot no I liked it a lot too I thought it was smart and thoughtful and you know it's all in the execution. And yeah. I, I like these characters. I want to see where this mayoralty goes. I want to see what happens in this world, if he can make it better. And he still wants his rap career. He's still seduced by that. And he's right. moving up in that world as he's moving up in politics. I, I like this whole stew. I, li I like the intelligence of these characters and their sort of emotional honesty. I will follow them. I want to see where this goes. I'm definitely yeah. binging the mayor. I too you know it's hard to know how much one sees in office and how is it going to be like you know case of the week that it's sort of like oh he messes that up he wants to be rapping but he's going to go and lead the city you know and it's it's it almost feels a little bit too early to tell, especially mm. with a comedy. Right. Like, I feel like so many comedies don't get great until halfway through their first season. Right. But I'm definitely, like, I'm season passing. I'm invested. I'm going to give it a try. Like, I feel invested in these yeah. characters, which at least is a start. Hell yeah. Coming up, we'll look at the new sitcom, 9JKM. And we'll decide who gave the performance of the week.
Welcome back, I'm Torre. I'm Jessica Shaw. And this is Binge Worthy. We tell you what to binge. And what to delete. Nine JKL stars Royal Pains as Mark Feuerstein as a recently divorced guy who moves next door to his parents because they bought the apartment for him 12 years earlier. What? They were just waiting. His parents <laughs> are played by Linda Lavin and Elliot Gould, AKA my life role models. <laughs> Nine JKL airs Mondays at 8.30 on CBS. There he is. Welcome back, Josh. Hey, Nick, what's going on? Ian, you not live in the same building as a real live TV star. Got any movies coming out? No, my plan is to get back into theater. You know, that's kind of why I moved back to New York. Oh, I heard it's because you lost all your money in the divorce and you staying with your parents for free. Look at this baby. I just want to eat him and squeeze him and chew on his squishy little tushy. <laughs> What are you guys doing? Pretend we're not here. We just want to watch. I sort of love this show. I mean, what? So, I are you kidding me? I like. I understood that show. I was like, oh my you were my parents. It was a little bit. It felt like it was kind of made for a very limited audience. I don't know that yeah. it has a, a broad appeal, appeal. <laughs> or appeal outside of the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Right. It, like, it felt a little bit like you know we're just gonna air this show on the Upper East Side <laughs> at 8, 8 30 p.m. <laughs> But it's gonna kill them. <laughs> Even in Soho, is so aggressive. No, no. What is that show? I think Mark is really funny. I think he's a very what are you funny actor. About? I thought some of the physical comedy he has to do with here, he's like, his parents live next door. They're all in his business every two seconds, and he's got to sneak past. There's a montage in the, the first episode. The whole montage of literally crawling, sliding. Oh my God! Oh, I thought it was so funny, and oh. I thought he was really good at just trying to get in. And then, of course, he finds out later that the doorman's like tipping off his mom about when he's coming this up. Doorman, who's weirdly overfamiliar. This is a I, mess. This is a mess. I hate this show, and I hate the once again the CBS intergenerational comedy where one generation is annoying the heck out of the other generation. Right. The older the older parents are all in his face. He's a divorcee trying to get his life back together, and every minute his mom's in his face, and his mom's oh. in his face. I don't need this, this to is not me, interesting. I was like, I get you, I see you, Jewish mother. Like, his, I I'm not saying that. she's not realistic, but why would I want to be in that world? And like, I am that world. His, his, his biggest challenge in life is that his mother is all in his <laughs> Like, <laughs> really? Well, I have to say about the parents, too, I think Mark is really funny, but to me, this show only works if the parents are perfectly cast. Ellie Gould's great. I mean, He's I learned great. a little too much about his like man parts in the script and everything. Linda Lavin is next level. I thought she was so funny as his mom. I loved her. I loved their da their dynamic. I thought they had such good chemistry. It reminded me a little bit of Raymond, of Everybody Loves Raymond, with that, you know, he's got the brother, and the brother's like, you pay attention how, to me. You know how, like, ESPN has all these, like, grandmas who are saying, like, why do I have to pay th for that channel on my cable bill? I never watch it. Well, people younger than grandmas should say that about CBS. Why do we have to pay for this channel for old people? All the shows, Young especially Sheldon. sitcoms, are for old people. Young Sheldon is for old people. You know that. I love that show. I mean, like, this, I, I just, this show could have been made 20 years ago. Its prime concern is the overbearing mother and her relationship with her divorcee son. And there's no, I have no interest in any of this. I have no interest in this universe. I don't like these people. Forget, like, I mean, it's just like this walking collection of stereotypes. Here comes her uh, pediatrician, his pediatrician sister-in-law, right? His brother's right, wife, right. who's like this beautiful Asian woman. They don't respect her. They're like, she has a new baby. Nobody, it doesn't seem like she has a new baby, but she has a new baby. And they're like, well, what do you do about babies? Like, I'm a pediatrician, as if they wouldn't already know that. Like, well, you got 4.8 on Yelp. Like, what are we talking about here? This is terrible. I didn't love the brother <laughs> and his wife as far as a plot line, but to me, like the magic of this show is Mark, Mark's character and the parents. And I feel like I like that. I don't think, sometimes I feel like there are certain shows that I can respect being objectively good shows and well-constructed shows, even though it's not necessarily my kind of comedy. Mm. And this show, though overall I wasn't like, yes, every single thing you did was exactly my kind of comedy and I love that. I thought there were real gems in it that I hope as the show goes on, mm. they're gonna figure out how to write to them. You know what, I am going to binge this show. I Just wanna because see there's a lot of Jewish people in the show? Yes, mm -hmm. I'm gonna see where mm -hmm. this show goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> deleting this show completely. Oh my God, it's so cloying. It made me very uncomfortable. It was all the bad awkward. Our pick for performance of the week, 
is Dave Chappelle and Def Comedy Jam 25 streaming now on Netflix. If I could have complete silence from the audience, please. <laughs> Well, hey, let me lead you in. Let me lead you in. All these let goddamn me letters okay. is just coming at me. They're just coming at me like. It's like when I went to high school, like not even high school, in elementary school, like they'd make us all read out loud in a circle. <laughs> and whenever it was my turn, all the mother kids would be like, Because oh. <laughs> So I've been nervous all night. Like, I'm not scared of the crowd. It's just like, what do I got to do? Read? <laughs> I read good as by myself. You know, when I first watched this moment, I was like, oh, this is interesting. And then you realize, no, it's sort of this broken moment where they started to read the prompter, it falls apart, and Dave just keeps going. And when Dave is off script, it's just so much funnier yep. and bigger and wilder. And at one moment, he's like, you can't air this. And then he's like, ah, oh, leave this in. And like, it just sort of grows. And they catch themselves. And they come back to trying to read the prompter, mess up again. I loved it. And like to see comics be this funny off the rails, it's just it's so amazing. Chappelle is is pretty perfect. It's very hard to, you know, to argue with that. Even when we saw him at the Emmys, you know, you have him on stage with someone like Melissa McCarthy, yeah. who's so brilliant in her own right, and she doesn't hold a candle to him because he's just he is you know, in a another level. Yeah. level than almost everyone working today. And this whole Def Comedy 25 was really funny. There's a lot of great moments from the past. They bring up new moments. Really, really funny. So I recommend the whole thing. In the wake of Julia Louis-Dreyfus's recent announcement that she has breast cancer, we want to send all our love and praise and well wishes to this comedy icon. She's made us laugh so much for, for so, so many, many times. Years. So many yes. years. I think back to Seinfeld and the moment when they're like, you know, yeah, you know, I had the lobster bisque, and then we went home, and yada yada, and I woke up the next morning, like, you yada yada the best part. Now I mentioned the bisque, right? Like, you just, you can <laughs> never forget so that. Or, or the dancing on Seinfeld, which was unique, and only JLD could pull that off, or, um, I mean, so many great little moments. Sex to save the friendship, and the catalog with Mr. Peterson, I mean, she was definitely one of my favorite parts of that show. Absolutely. And my favorite parts of modern television. Yeah, and when you think about how that role of like the thankless ex-girlfriend role could have been, and she took it to a whole other level. Yeah. I love watching her all the time on Veep. I mean, if you need to just witness brilliance, just Google Tony Hale nosebleed mm -hmm. Veep, and it's like one of the great scenes. But I think of some, sometimes when you see her off script is even funnier. Yeah. I think about her accepting her Emmy with Tony Hale standing behind her and she's in character and he's in character as Gary and she's like, you know, he's handing her things and it's so funny. Or even when Tina Fey and Amy Poehler hosted the Golden Globes and they cut to Julie, Julie Louis-Dreyfus and she has like the best face. She's just so funny. She can't not be brilliant. Yeah, no, that's true. All right, that's it for our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Jessica Shaw. I'm Torre, and this has been Bingeworthy. We love you, JLD. Get well soon. Indeed.